Hey everybody, it's the Chris and Des Show. I'm Chris. And I'm Des. And we're going to put a mashup of two movies that you won't see put together anywhere else. No. Except right, right. here on this show. <laughs> we're going to put uh, Edward Norton's Motherless, Motherless Brooklyn together with Cats. Need, there's no introduction either. No. Uh-uh. Um, you take How one, I'll take one. How do you want to do it? Oh, I'll take cats. You take cats. I'll take Motherless Brooklyn. Okay. okay. Motherless Brooklyn is the story of this white guy who has kind of like Asperger's maybe or something. or yeah, even some, yeah. No, even like maybe a form of autism kind of. Like functioning. his brain. Yeah, but his brain caused him to like say words and repeat things, and, but also caused him to be like super smart in some areas. Yeah. So he kind of like is a detective type thing um and then he starts to unravel this story and he falls in love with this girl and she's black and he's white and it's the 50s sure. 40s 40s i'll look it up in a second um 60s it's some decade that's not right now and <laughs> it's in the past it's directed by and written by edward norton and starring yes. Yes. edward norton yes. um 1950s, 1950s. um it, oh, he has Tourette's. That's right. He has Tourette's. Oh, Sorry. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, here's the thing. It is two hours and 24 minutes long, of which you will feel every <laughs> minute. I'm not even... This is not even a joke. We are sitting down watching this movie. We are 15 minutes into it. And I look at my watch. And I'm like, I'm thinking like, we must be halfway done with this movie. And I'm like, oh my gosh, 15 minutes? <laughs> It is the worst paced film I've ever, maybe ever seen. Oh, sorry. This is why we're putting Cats and Mothers Brooklyn together. They're They're two of our least favorite movies of the year. Uh, The acting is fine. I mean, I like Alec Baldwin as a bad guy, I think, in general. And I like Bobby Cannavale and almost everything. And Willem Dafoe, I love. Yeah. Bruce Willis is good in it, too. And Edward Norton's a great actor. He is a good actor. He should stick to acting, probably. Because this is a poorly written mess of a thing. And so it just unravels for the next two and a half hours. We saw The Irishman earlier that day. It was a three and a half hour film, which felt like half the length of this movie easily. Because um, after 200, my, I had to look, turn and look at my sister and she's like... <laughs> about halfway through, like, Kemi is not enjoying this film right now. <laughs> uh, and Des and I felt similarly also I actually so it was like, just poorly written on? and directed and I love you oh, stick to acting you're a good actor huh buddy let's do that Des what'd you think of Motherless Brooklyn I agree completely let's talk about Cats let's talk about Cats Cats is a story first of all that is based on a book of poems by T.S. Eliot if you get a chance, because after this movie, it's going to go away from all of society. But if you ever get a chance to see a well-made production of the stage version of this musical, I would recommend to go see it. Mr. Salazar here would not recommend you to go see it. I would recommend to go see it. I enjoy this musical. I enjoy this live action play musical if you get a chance to see it. This movie is based on the play and they did horrible things the the cgi and the special effects were creepy the these creatures had human feet and human hands right and their faces were weird and really the the horrible part is you lose the dancing, which is the most beautiful part of this show, is to see the dancing. But because of the CGI and the perspective that they put on everything, you couldn't really appreciate the dancing because it was so weird. weird. It was just weird. weird. And so they tried to give this show a storyline, which is another thing that was just a big old mess. Because it's not a story, really. It's just a book of poems based on these cats and it's in the musical it's just song 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 based on all these poems poems of these silly cats they're silly it's a silly show completely silly but it's so fun and the dancing is beautiful and this movie is horrible 
Let's talk about Jennifer Hudson for a second. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> she she sings she sings very well. She really does. The phone is ringing. But she they zoomed in on her face and she was crying and her nose was running and they didn't move away from her face so she could wipe her nose. It was just so disgusting and distracting and it wasn't it wasn't good. I it's too bad. If you listen to the recording, it's probably just fine. If you just listen to the soundtrack, she sounds really good on it. But if you have to watch her sing it, yeah, it's good. not enjoyable. Thank you. And I think he's getting off the phone now. But it, I do not recommend this movie Sorry. on any level at all. To anyone. To anyone. Okay, here's the thing. Des and I are the perfect people to review Cats because we come from two different backgrounds. Absolutely. Des likes the musical Cats. I do. And I feel this way about musical cats. <laughs> it should be in the dark, close. Um, I just don't like it. It's too silly for me and crazy. And I get you guys to come at it with, and I think Des will be would agree with this, maybe she'll say, is that she's sentimental about it. She grew up liking it and all that stuff. Absolutely. But I didn't come from that. And so I was like, what the heck is this about? It is, you have to go in knowing like, there's no storyline. Yeah. It's just a bunch of poems just, about cats singing. And silly. if you get it's there, silly. you can get the silliness of it. Right. If you want to try to take it seriously, yeah. don't think it's like next to normal it's or about Dear cats. Evan Hansen or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Come from away. It's not supposed to be like that. No. And it isn't. And on that, I will say, even the musical, which I don't like, is better, much better than the movie, which is not really saying a lot of stuff because cool. this is a horrible, horrible movie. Now, let's pretend like we can find some good things about it. Judy Dench is a great actress whom I love. This, oh, Judy, who, fire your agent. They zoomed in too close, and she has not good teeth. She's British. <gasps> she has horrible she teeth. She does not have true. good teeth. And it should not be that close to her face. Uh, a good thing. Taylor Swift, I thought, was one of the best she things did, about the she movie. She did pretty good. She wrote a song with... Which is um, beautiful, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Andrew Lloyd Webber, thank you. And it's not bad. It's a beautiful song. It's and decent. her character was... Really good. I thought, I'm like, oh, actually, this might be a highlight. And then um, Ian McKellen, right? Oh, yeah. Ian McKellen. He's, so good. Cute. He's, He's good. so good. All right. Let, that was it. That was it for yeah. the good. Um, Rebel Wilson. Rebel Wilson. Oof. I Rebel. like Rebel Wilson. I know. I loved yeah. her in Jojo Rabbit. Usually. I thought she was hilarious. I yeah. like her in the Pitch Perfect movies. This she was... She did not oh, help this man. man. The humor they gave her, if they let... If they wrote this for her... It just fell flat, yeah. like flat. And humor. James Corden. I know, and I love James Corden. Again, humor they're trying to write, it's like, is this supposed to be funny? And then... I think they were the ones who really suffered from them trying to create a storyline. Right. Like, it just didn't work. And I'm going to say something that is going to offend a lot of people. Oh, no. But I'm going to say it. Go ahead. I'm not a fan of the way that Jennifer Hudson sings in general. Really? It is very yelly. Oh, sure. I am. don't need to be yelled at that often. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so she is constantly trying to, even when she's quiet, she's trying to yell it. And she can get a little pitchy when she's trying to be quiet because she's a yeller. In Dreamgirls, I loved her. And that is a song, you have to yell that whole entire song that she yeah. has. Yeah. And so she does, and she does a great job. Any other time, it's like, Ooh, stop yelling for a second, though. Uh, and I feel like she might suffer from this idea of like she got an Oscar for her first role. Oh yeah. And so now people are like, well she's an Oscar winning actress when it's like I think she's really good at playing that role and not necessarily she really stepped up stepping to out other at movies. It. Right. She's not Lupita Nyongo. She's a bit of a one hit wonder. Right. Lupita you could put in anywhere. Whatever, whatever you want to put her in. Yeah. And she's amazing. Uh, uh yeah, so there's that. The acting, the CGI's, oh my gosh, I can't. And we, the sad thing is we saw right when it came out. So we saw the original version before they supposedly fixed it. They changed it. it? Yeah, there's, after, two weeks later they came out with another version that's supposed to have fixed it. I am not going back to see that movie. You couldn't pay me to go back to see this movie. <laughs> um, it is just bad. It's just bad. It is bad. It's real bad. <laughs> this Everything's bad. It's just bad. <laughs> Just listen to Taylor Swift's song. She sings herself on yeah. iTunes, and then you're going to be just fine. It'll be fine. And skip the movie. 
And Tom really? Hooper, who has, you know, who directed The King's Speech and the John Adams miniseries on um, HBO, uh, directed this film, and he should not have. No one should have. That's the summary of it. It is like a, it's kind of like a train wreck. Mm -hmm. You're watching, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so bad right now. It's horrible. We should turn away. We should leave. I sat next to you. And Idris Elba? How did they get Idris Elba to be Jamie in this Nesbar, movie? And I love Idris Elba. Oh. I sat next to our friend and we, uh, we her, her and I were la looking at each other like, what is happening? <laughs> what is happening right now in this movie? Uh, what is horrible. happening? The whole Rebel Wilson scene is like close to the beginning. I'm like, I don't know what I just saw right now. Like, is she trying to show us? What is she trying to show us in this? Can I don't like this. It's not good. It's not good. Um, it made me much more of a dog person than I already was one. <laughs> no to no. the cats. Uh, that's all we can say. Yeah. So to both of these movies. Don't. I'm. You know how sometimes we say like, well, you can maybe go see the movie or do rent it. Don't yeah. even rent it. Don't. Pass on cats and pass on motherless brother. Watch a million other things. Go see Jojo Rabbit or The Irishman or Parasite or The Two Popes or any, Once Upon a Time things. in Hollywood or any of those other films. And don't see this. Ford versus Ferrari. The farewell. Go see the farewell. Go see the farewell. Go see Parasite. Go see Parasite. Don't. 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 <laughs> That's all. The Let end. us know if you disagree. <laughs> if you're like, Cats is my favorite movie this year. You don't exist. <laughs> you don't exist. That person does not exist. It wasn't Judy Dench's favorite movie of the year, okay? So we know she liked The Two Popes better. Yeah. Um. Anyways, let us know what you thought. If you disagreed. Maybe you like Motherless Brooklyn. No. Let us know. Okay, bye. bye.